you forgot to say, it's hero time! After being trapped in a timeless dimension, unable to age, Billy alters Ben and Rook to de-age themselves five years, leaving them to figure out how to defeat Billy in their adolescent bodies. It's arrested development. The robots from Dimension 12 was a great choice to bring back, as when they were initially introduced, they had no notable backstory or origin, which gives the sequel series a chance to fill in the holes with their own explanation without the fear of changing what once came before. <clears throat> the opening demonstrated Ben and Rook's seemingly effortless teamwork now that they've been working together for a few months. Aside from Cash and JT, we never really met other people from Ben's past, so Billy is another attempt to flesh out all the years prior to Alien Force, or just school life in general. I like how they directly acknowledge the similarities between Billy and Captain Nemesis, too. But this episode takes a very long time to get going, which does hurt its score, along with Ben's aliens not changing with his age as well, something the classic series previously set the standard of, not to mention that Rook is still very capable in his younger body. Aside from seeing young Ben and Rook, in which the novelty wears off fast, this episode fumbles its premise and leaves a less than middling episode in its place. Though it has been a while since we've heard Humongous or Roar, so I'm glad that's back. <laughs> I'm always put off by the spoiled rich kid antagonist that cartoons seem to love creating, but Billy does serve as an effective antagonist. He seems to have been aware of Ben's secret ever since childhood, but like most of Ben's villains, didn't care about exposing him. Although Ben can be careless, it does feel a bit too cruel for Ben to laugh at Billy for being trapped in another dimension for five years. Usually Ben is more empathetic. Rook as well. I expected more from you, man. What Billy went through must have been very traumatizing. Now this isn't to excuse Billy's actions as he was trying to do the same thing to Ben in the first place, but he was also, you know, a child. And coming back to see your rival has gained universal fame only fuels his jealousy and rage. Of course you became world famous. Why wouldn't you be? Aziz does an excellent job voicing the character, especially when you consider he was directed over the phone, which was much less common during this episode's production. I didn't much care for Mazuma, and although her origins, while not specified in this episode and are admittedly very creepy, build upon Billy's twisted perspective on life. The opening battle has a lot of special camera moves you don't see often in Ben 10, highlighting the intense action. Though this is one of those scenes where you wish Humongousaur would use his ability to grow again. The CG on the robots is some of the best of the series, and is nearly impossible to tell when they are 2D or 3D unless you know what to look for. And even then, they are pulled off very seamlessly. I like how Billy's tower has been shown in a few previous episodes already before his actual appearance, enforcing that he's always been a part of Ben's history. The Omnitrix hanging loose off of Ben's wrist hammers in the ever-growing problem of the watch not actually being genetically bonded to Ben, whereas now, Ben doesn't even need the strap fully fastened on his wrist to function, which is self-explanatory on why this is a problem. It was also nice to see Ballweevil again, as he hasn't shown up since his debut, although he is noticeably much smaller than usual. Blox also uses his powers in some pretty fun ways too. He also seems much more efficient against the robots than Humongousaur. Go figure. As another one-off episode, this one doesn't serve much to build the bigger world of Ben 10 or progress the story forward, nor does it display any unique intrigue with its isolated premise like Gwen 10, single-handed, or video games. And as Billy's future appearance is also in a standalone episode, there's not much reason to make sure this episode is on your binge list either. Paired with sharing a similar premise to Don't Drink the Water, this episode leaves a lot of interesting expectations that don't get fulfilled, threaded together with with a story that doesn't spark interest either. Season 2 of Omniverse feels like a lot of highs and lows, with this being on the lower end. However, in the spirit of Don't Drink the Water, if you have any of your own ideas how a young ball weevil or a young Blox should look like to pair with this episode's young Ben, post it online and tag us in it in any of our social medias. We'd love to see it. Stop whining, Billy. Act your age.